centuries, the South Seas have been remote, rich in romance and mystery. It has always been a magnet to lure the scholar, the sportsman, and the adventurer. such as these, uh, possibly uninhabited since the beginning of time. You mean to say nobody lives on a beautiful island like that? Not a soul. Cool. You know, this may sound crazy, but I've got a notion. <laughs> if you've got a notion, 10 to 1, it's crazy, all right. You know, I'd like to get off at an island like that with nothing but a toothbrush. For the love of Pete. We're on our way to shoot tigers in Sumatra. Now, what's the big idea? Yeah, I don't have to kill to get a thrill. I'd like to get off at an island like this and fight the battle of nature against man with my bare hands. Raw. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was on an island just like this that Robinson Crusoe lived. That's exactly what I mean. Ah, uh, Robinson Crusoe was a myth. Well, let's make him a reality. You? Well, you've been living behind that boy shirt so many years, you'd be crying, Mama, the first day. Don't you believe it? You're not in your right mind, Mama. No, if I were, I wouldn't be thinking a thing like this. I tell you what you fellas do. Go on to Sumatra and get your tiger. When you get back, you'll find me living in a penthouse with hot and cold running water and grocers delivered twice a day. Not a chance. There are cannibals on these islands. When we got back, we'd find you tied to a stake and be the remnants of a short dinner. Bet you wouldn't. Bet you would. Bet you wouldn't. Bet you would. I bet you a million dollars. Make it a thousand in real money, and I'll bet you. You're on. Roger, uh, pack his toothbrush. He's leaving. Now, wait a minute. Now, this is a bet. I'll bet you, when you get back, I'll be living the life of Riley. And you bet that I'll be tied to a stake. Is that right? That's right. Good. Ha <laughs> ha. Swatches for factories and ties for fools. I'm off. <laughs> Where shall we send your mail? Park Avenue and 52nd Street. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, how about that dog? Well, Robinson Crusoe had a dog here. You're gonna have the toothbrush. I'll roll my own. Come on, Rooney. You'll win that bet or die in the attempt. You think so? I've got something up my sleeve. Rooney, now you be a good sport and go through with this thing. I'll take you to a cat farm next summer. a boy. You picked a nut for a master. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're certainly in for it now. Cut off from the world for many, many months. I suppose the first thing to do is to look for water. Oh, oh, oh drinking water. Aqua pura. Come on, let's go. Water. That's not bad. Try it. Here, taste it. It's a little brackish, but not bad at all. One. Try it. Now, wait a minute. I'll give you one more chance. Coconuts. Fresh water from coconuts. Thank you. 
have an ancestor that's not very far removed that could put his teeth into a situation like this and swallow it one go. after your great-grandfather. <laughs> well, Rooney, Rooney here is looking at you. Ah. Now, how about something to eat? I may finish by eating grass, but I'm certainly not going to start that way. Ha! <laughs> ha! Oh, Van Camp's backyard. Coconuts. Bananas. Breadfruit. Pineapple. I'm all set. Now what about you? I'm afraid you've got to go on a diet. <laughs> now for a place to live. My boy is called a survey. The next thing is an engineering job. Now I'm going to show you a little trick. This happened 10, 15, or 200,000 years ago. The first thing that man did when he stood on his hind legs was to throw his plane into a new position. The nails got short, his teeth got dull, and he made himself his first implement. This is burrow bark, Rooney. Natives of these islands make rope out of this and various other things. I've been a Boy Scout, and I've read Dan Beard's handy book. This is the first labor-saving device known to man. ways to use it. No nails, no screws, no spikes, nothing to deceive you. Simple, twist, 
your wrist and press to change all. You have it. Eureka! a cinch. Isn't nature wonderful? Isn't nature kind? <laughs> I beg your pardon, I'm wrong again. Come on, Rooney. We'll build a house in spite of our unfriendly neighbors. <laughs> Here is an island that is totally different, both uh, geographically and in vegetation, from our Robinson Crusoe Island. Oh, oh, look who's here. Ooh, little drama going on on this island. <laughs> little girl evidently does not want to take her back. Mama Spank. My jewel. She's a cute little trick. Wait a minute. You know what this is? It's a betrothal ceremony. Betrothal? Yes. <laughs> the girl presents her call to the man she is supposed to marry. He accepts it as a token of the engagement. <laughs> Look at the face of the guy she's going to marry. Oh, wonder who the grouchy old dame is. Probably the girl's mother. <laughs> well, she's a good match for the son-in-law. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Uh, what happens after the betrothal? Well, uh, after several months, or as the natives say, after the fourth moon, uh, they have the wedding. And the girl is bathed by her bridesmaids, dressed, garlanded, and taken before the groom-to-be. Uh, whereupon, to complete the ceremony, he ups and knocks out her front teeth. Oh, no kidding? <laughs> Actual fact. <laughs> oh, well, we do the same thing. Only we usually wait until after the ceremony. <laughs> 